it's Phoebe with Matt behind the camera and today we are boarding Australia's most luxurious train journey. Our journey on board the Garn Expedition will take us from Darwin to Adelaide covering some 2,979 kilometers and we're going to be stopping along the way to explore Australia's beautiful landscape. Now there are two very big reasons why this trip is so special to me and I am going to be sharing those along with the history of the Garn and just how this all-inclusive experience actually works a little bit later but for now it is time to check in, it is time to board and go and see our cabin and I am so curious to see where we're going to be spending the next few days. Let's go! Welcome to K9. <laughs> so this is our cabin and we are staying in one of their gold twin cabins. There are two classes, there's the gold and the platinum. The platinum is double the size, so if you're fancy, if you're balling without the budget, that's you. <laughs> For us, we are so excited to be in this gold room. Now, as I understand it, these are our beds. So at night, an attendant is going to come in, they're going to put this down, put this down, and that's going to be our sort of bunk bed sleeping situation. Matt's already bagsy the top bunk, he's got dips on that, I'm fine with the bottom. We have our mirror here, we have an ensuite through here, let's get a first impression of that. That's actually a really good size. I thought it was going to be a lot smaller than that. So it's got a shower, toilet, just your basic vanity. Um, we have two windows, we have the window out there, we have our window here which is a really big size. I mean, I think it looks really cozy and comfortable, what do you guys think? When you're settled into your cabin, please take a moment to look through the offerings available for this journey in Catherine, Alice Springs and Cooper Pedy, and your hospitality attendant will be around shortly to take your selections. To get here for our trip, we flew from Brisbane to Darwin. We caught the $10 airport shuttle into town where we spent the night at the Palm City Resort. This morning we woke up very early and made our way to the Doubletree by Hilton where we caught the free shuttle bus which took us to the train station. Now once we were there, grabbed our carry-on bags and got on the train where we found our cabin and then it was time for brunch. I was a little bit curious about the food on board, so far so good, but I will be showing you the food a little bit more later. Right now we are relaxing, enjoying, having a coffee in this beautiful little space. They have barista coffee and oat milk and then we are heading out for our very first off-train experience. It's going to be pretty special. I think you guys are going to love it. This one. This is what we call a snake neck data bird. We are in the beautiful Nimbalik Gorge, and here to tell us a lot more about it is our lovely guide Pat. G'day, so yeah, here at Nimbalik National Park, um, which is about three hours south of Darwin. So, Nimbalik, uh, it's a big gorge system. Uh, Nimbalik, it's uh, Nipmi is a Jarwin word, so Jarwin traditional owners of this area, of this land. So, Nimbalik's two separate words Nipmi meaning cicada and look, meaning place or country. The Catherine River flowing through, uh, beautiful sandstone escarpments, uh, taking boat tours, taking the Gan yeah. up through the gorge. So we get a great lot of people from the Gan, great lifeline for us. So show them our beautiful country. Now folks, our first main feature up in the second gorge is large cliff face on your right hand side. This one's known as Jeddah's Rock or Jeddah's Leap. Have any of you seen or heard of the movie Jeddah before? This rock face here was the backdrop or the feature for that movie. There was an ad promoted in the Northern Territory a number of years ago. The a bloke called Daryl Summers, remember him? Yeah. He was flying down there in an inflatable tube. He said, you never, never know if you never, never go. That's that section there. It is August and let me tell you, it is warm. <laughs> So if you're coming out here, make sure you are wearing something that breathes and you are drinking a lot, a lot of water. Okay guys, I am loving this experience. It is so beautiful in here. Um, I don't know, Pat said something really interesting. He said that the tra traditional custodians here, they feel that the land doesn't belong to them, they belong to the land. And that, that really resonated with me. That's how I feel when I see this. I just feel like, wow, we are part of this and it's so beautiful and I'm just 
so grateful to be here. It's absolutely stunning. The gun is an all-inclusive experience, and that means all of your meals and your drinks, including alcohol, are included in your fare. So you can and you will drink as much as you like. And when we boarded, we were having coffee. Some of the older generation were already into the booze. What we're sitting down to tonight is our first full meal. Now your lunches are two courses, your dinners are three. We had a delicious entree. I had a lovely cauliflower soup. Matt had something very interesting. He tried the crocodile dumplings, and by all accounts, they were delicious. And now our mains have come out. So I have ordered their dal. They're very accommodating with any dietary requirements you may have. And Matt has got the barramundi, and it's so noisy. Hopefully you can hear me. <laughs> You would be trapped, but lucky for us, the food is incredible. Good morning, you guys. Um, before we boarded the train, I told you there were two reasons this trip is very special to me, and today feels like a good time to tell you one of those reasons. About five years ago, my auntie was diagnosed with terminal lymphoma. And I was in the hospital with her, just her and me, when the doctor came in and said, you only have six weeks to live. And that was a really, that was a really tough thing. My mom, she didn't want to give up. My auntie had pretty much given up. She was, she was done. She accepted it and she just felt like there was no hope. My mom, not so much. She's pretty tough like that. So my auntie moved into the hospital full time. My mom demanded treatment and this incredible oncologist that my mom magically found, he said, look, let's throw a Hail Mary. I will try one treatment and see if it works. And my mom just poured her life into my auntie, into her sister, of course, as you would. And so every day, my mom and I would be up at the hospital with my auntie. And as you do, I guess, when you are staring down the face of certain death, you start to look back on your life and you start to think about all the things I wish I'd done or done differently. And one thing that my auntie brought up was the gun. And she talked about it a lot and she said, you know, I just wish I'd done it. I kept putting it off and I wish I'd gone and I, I should have just done it. I don't know what I was waiting for because here I am and I'm never going to get the chance. So this cancer treatment's happening and somehow against all odds, the oncologist says it's, it's working. It's working. And I, I think, I think things are looking positive. So one day I got online on the, the website for the guard, on Journey Beyond's website, and I ordered the free brochure that they send out, and it came to my house, and I took it into the hospital, and the three of us were flicking through it, and it became this source of love and light and hope, and we would talk about it and dream about it. We're going to go on the gun, and this is what we're going to do, and this is what we're going to eat, and the three of us together, and we're going to do this thing that you thought you were never going to do. Lo and behold, my auntie goes into remission, and... We think she's going to make it, but um, she picked up an infection and she went to she went into the ICU. She never came out, and my mom and I were with her when she died. And I just remember feeling like I wanted to scoop my soul out of myself and put it into her, and I couldn't. It was very hard. And so here we are. <laughs> some four years later and we're on the gun because my mom and I made a promise that we would do this and I just I just want to encourage you to find your gun whatever it is whatever that thing is that you've been putting off that you've been dreaming of doing quit the job <laughs> change your life go on the trip book the thing spend the money change it whatever you need to do just do it because you don't want to be staring down the face of certain death, thinking about all the things you regretted not doing. So whatever it is, just do it. Find your gun and do it.
Welcome to Alice Springs. Now, welcome to Alice Springs. <laughs> welcome to Alice Springs, a remote town here in the Northern Territory and the halfway point between Darwin and Adelaide. Now, Alice Springs is also known as the gateway point to the Red Center. So if you are somebody who wanted to visit Uluru, this is where you would come before heading out there. wasn't too strenuous you're uphill but you can take it nice and slow and then the views up here are unbelievable we've got that ridge line and then we can even see the moon and it's like a scene out of Star Wars or something like that it is unbelievable I've never been to Utah it is so high up on my list but this is what I imagine Utah looks like as well it's just I don't know our country is so beautiful we're so lucky to live here our next stop is Simpsons Gap. Now this is what I have been waiting all day for. The walk down there isn't going to be very long, so let's go check it out because I am I am desperate to see it. Come on. I'm trying to hold it down. Pull me now, you're less sure than before. What did I do to make you walk in close? Wow, this was well worth the wait. It is incredible. Now, Simpsons Gap would have been formed when this was an inland sea some 350 million years ago. That, that blows my mind. All the water rushing through here would have carved this out. And we get to stand in here today and look at it. Now, in terms of wildlife, we're gonna be able to see some rock wallabies. I, I can see one. The lady said it was really hard to see one, but there's one up there. They are small and they are very like rock colored. So they are hard to spot, but they did see him. Um, and then behind me we have the permanent water there, uh, that water will dry up in extreme drought, but oh my gosh, an easy walk down, well worth doing. Alright, it's time for dinner now. We're not having dinner on board the train tonight, we are doing something very special. I asked two of the other guests who had done the gown before what their highlight was and they said tonight. So strap yourselves in, we're in for a pretty special dinner. There'll be pennies from heaven for you and me. Come on, Django, do that. <laughs> Hello, folks. Sleeping me in two, watching you sleeping away. We're on a camel ride. <laughs> All right, so the awesome thing we're doing tonight is this dinner out at this outback oh, telegraphed outpost much, under the folks. stars. Um, the food is meant to be amazing. We're sitting with our new friends, Shelly and Emily, and they are so lovely. We're called Heartbeat on my left. Here. There's camel rides. <laughs>
I am dying to make that joke in front of our um, next generation of friends. I just want to get on the bus and be like, hey everybody, how's it going? But I don't have the nuggets to do that just yet. I'm hoping to work up to it. Um, now, I told you there were two reasons this trip is very special for me. I told you about one of them yesterday and today I'm going to tell you about the other one. It's my birthday. Happy birthday. <laughs> This is the dining room where we've been having almost all of our meals you've seen when we've eaten off-site. Um, but this is where we're starting our day today. The breakfasts have been amazing and the food in general has been amazing. The service staff, of course, they're on board with you all the time. They don't get off and sleep somewhere else. And they do an incredible job. I mean, to live on here, to work on here, the service they offer has been second to none. They are so attentive. They remember you. They remember your order. They're always like, can I get you something? It's so lovely. Now, let me talk to you about our breakfast this morning. So we are choosing from juices. We've got fresh juice, the juice of the day. You choose your breakfast starter, some cereals, some muesli, and then they have the main. So all kinds of goodies. We've got toast of brioche, baked eggs, a full breakfast, um, anything your heart desires, really. Uh, so let's order some breakfast and enjoy this incredible sunset. Ah, this is such a great way to start the day. Some on the ground, you feel it all around. So real, you can give it in the sound, yeah. Did you know there is a town in Australia where it gets so hot that people have to live entirely underground? That is one of the places we're going to be visiting today as we explore a little piece of South Australia and it's our off train experience today. Um, we're doing a couple of other cool things which I think you'll love as well. Let's go. Better times. Better times. Better times. Our first stop is here at the breakaways. It took about 45 minutes on the bus to get here. This is something I really wanted to see. This is beautiful. So our tour guide, Pat, is gonna be walking us around. He's also a local, telling us about the local animals and the plant life, and also how this area was formed. It started off as inland seas, went to forest, then decided it wanted to go to a lake, and then decided it wanted to be a desert. So a pretty cool procedure, but um, that's why you get these unique rocks and cool features that you don't wouldn't see in another desert. So if you look through this valley straight through here, you can see the town and the windmills. So that's Cooper Pedy right there. because we are in Kubernetes, and this place is famous for its opal mines. But first, before we go and do an opal mine tour and we talk more about it, I've got to eat. <laughs> now I appreciate mine is not the most exciting to look at because it's been played a bit geez, but that is my dream come true. <laughs> Matt has got a beef sort of a thing and a chicken sort of a thing and it's a really cool experience. Dining underneath the earth like this is wild. We're just inside this big tunnel. Guys, I'm starving. I need to eat. I've eaten two bread rolls one after the other and I need some bread. Which, where you guys are, that's all opal underneath there, behind you and all that. Um, so you just white light for that. UV torch if you want to go for a dig. So if you've got a fair bit of energy built up after dinner, you can go down this drive here, there's picks on the ground. Cooper Pedy is famous for its opal mining. Now, opals were first discovered here way back in 1915 by a gentleman by the name of Bill. And since then, a lot of other people have come out here to give it a go. And one of the unique things about Cooper Pedy is this, <laughs> the underground situation. So of course you have underground mines, but it does get so hot here that it's 45 degrees Celsius in summer, around 113 degrees Fahrenheit that living above ground is just not an option. If you are anything like me, as soon as you heard that people lived underground in Kuvapiti, in these dugouts, you wanted to see one, right? You wanted to know what it looked like inside. Well, at this museum we're at, they have an example. So this, this is what it would look like. So you have a living room here. Um, what's interesting is they have to have air vents. Of course, I didn't really think about it when I was looking at them, but for airflow, I mean, you're underground. So they have these big air vents here. It is just, it's wild. We are completely underground. So you can see you would have your living area, you have your kitchen behind you. They have the front door down the end there. It's really cool to actually get to see it. I'm so curious. 
Now I'm going to show you something very, very, very special indeed. These behind me, these bright red flowers that you're going to see with this kind of bulbous dark middle inside them, they are Sturt Desert Peas and I'm a bit of a, like a flower nerd. They are an Australian native, of course. It is very, very, very special to see them. You only catch them in these very dry, arid parts of the country. I told you about my auntie earlier, but um, when I was a kid, we did this awful road trip and it was, it was honestly, it was hell on wheels. <laughs> but she was determined to see these and it's pretty special that we've driven all the way out here and the day that we've seen them is on my birthday. So I feel very blessed to see them today. And if you do see them yourself, make sure you stop and have a look at them. Just don't pick them or touch them, of course, because they are so special. The garden was originally named the Afghan Express, and it was named after the pioneering cameleers who journeyed into the red centre of Australia more than 150 years ago. Now, the original train line actually followed the route of explorer John McDowell Stewart. And it was on April 4, 1929, that the very first gun went from Adelaide to Alice Springs, carrying 100 passengers on its first journey. Now, a lot has changed since then, you guys, but one thing hasn't, and that is that we love to travel. We love adventure. lovely evening and I just want to say a huge thank you to the onboard staff they went to such an effort to make tonight's dinner my birthday is so special so thank you to each and every single one of you you really can make it so special I really appreciate it dinner tonight was amazing and it is our last meal on board the gun tonight we have a breakfast tomorrow when we wake up very close to Adelaide and then we will be departing once we get to the rail terminal there and flying back home. But before we do that, I wanted to show you where we have been sleeping and tell you whether or not it has been comfortable. So while you are at dinner, the staff come in and they bring down this bunk bed, they flip over your seat and they make your bed and set it all up. So are the beds comfortable? Shockingly, yes. And with that, you guys, that brings this week's extra special episode and my birthday to a close. I really hope you have enjoyed it. Now, if you don't already, be sure to subscribe right now so you never miss a single episode and say hello in the comments below. I hope you have a wonderful week ahead and I will see you with a brand new episode next week. Love you.